so very first impressions of riding the new SCL 500. It's just like uh, Honda told us it would be actually. It's uh, just incredibly approachable, smooth, easy. Um, it, it's just everything fits naturally. You know, pulling out, pulling the clutch, like it's one of the easiest clutch pulls I've ever felt. It's just so easy to ride. The bike's low to the ground, it's comfortable. It's got this perfect riding position. Um, the gauges are easy to read, although I wish there was a little more contrast on the LCD. Like the mirrors are clear, they don't vibrate. The bike has plenty of power. I mean, 45, around 45, 50 horsepower for a bike that only weighs a little over 400 pounds. And it's a smooth twin cylinder engine. Uh, it's just such a great motorcycle. I mean, I think this could make, you know, newer riders happy, but even if you're an experienced rider, I could see a lot of really more experienced riders just having a great time with this bike. And you're never gonna have to worry about it being a Honda. It's just, there's no drama. Everything works is so well engineered and so well tested the qdr quality durability reliability all that stuff that you get with honda is just second to none and um what a great city bike for just scooting around the city but the nice thing about having this engine is that this is highway capable this bike will go 100 miles an hour like it's not like some of the royal enfields that, that we've tested here on the channel or things like that where you're limited to like 70 or 75 no this thing has some more serious power behind it which makes it you can do a lot more stuff with it um, the switch gear i mean talk about look how big the horn buttons are and and everything the the light switches like even with big gloves you can use all this stuff it's just it's just simple um you know coming to a standstill the bike feels very light uh so low to the ground so easy to get your foot down so i'm really enjoying it so far all right let's do a quick walk around uh show you the specs features give you a little tour of the scl 500. so for the engine 471 cc liquid cooled parallel twin uh, it's around 45 or 50 horsepower give or take but that's really not the highlight of the bike right it's just enough power to do what you need to do Low compression ratio, so you can run a regular fuel, low maintenance, typical Honda stuff there going on with the engine. Uh, six speed transmission, you do have a slip assist clutch, which is great. Makes the clutch pull really light and really easy to ride and prevents uh, the wheel from locking up. Um, you have a 19 inch front wheel and a 17 inch rear wheel, so kind of that scrambler uh, wheel set up there. Uh, you've got dual rear shocks. Suspension travel is gonna be uh, about, about five and a half to six inches front and back. So a little bit more than a street bike, which is nice, absorbing potholes. If you want to do a little bit of dirt road riding, you can definitely do that, uh, which is great to have. Um, tire sizes, 110, 80, 19 in the front, 150, 60, 17 at the back. Uh, we haven't talked about the fuel tank. The fuel tank is uh, 3.2 gallons. Uh, I'll put the liters here below. But you're thinking, well, that's kind of too small. But actually, no, it's not really small because the, these motorcycles get such amazing fuel economy. This still gives you a range of uh, around 200 miles or so before you get off and push. A uh, seat height is a really respectable uh, 31 inches, so really good for uh, newer riders or beginner riders or people that just aren't that tall. Um, curb weight, 419 pounds. That's fully fueled up. I'll put the kilograms here below. So walking around the bike, you can see sort of the scrambler style exhaust the LED lighting with the cool rear turn signals. Uh, you can see this kind of tubular style swing arm, which I think is really, really nice. You can see the engine here, foot pegs, um, the little pads on the side of the tank, which I think look really, really nice. Um, front LED kind of distinctive headlight styling here. You can see the fork gaiters. I really like how they combine some of the sort of, you know, more old school styling with the modern touches. I think it's really good. And if you look at everything you're getting for the price point here, it's really pretty impressive. You can see the twin shocks here in the back, the seat, which has that kind of vintage style. Um, and then coming up here to the controls, real simple Honda control, horn, a high low beam switch, turn signals. You've got the little LCD dashboard, which has adjustable brightness. Um, it's kind of dim right now because of the lighting that we're filming this in. You can see typical kind of Honda switches here. The mirrors uh, are just fine. 
fuel tank filler. So it's just a basic motorcycle that does what you need to do and isn't anything too crazy. All right, so the instrumentation on the SCL, uh, you've got a fuel gauge at the bottom. Then you, right above that, you've got, you can scroll through trip computer, uh, trip odometer, uh, fuel miles per gallon, stuff like that. Then you have a big speedometer, then you have a gear indicator, and you have a clock. So you have everything you need, and it's a nice compact gauge cluster. And the speedometer is pretty big. I just wish the whole thing was a little bit uh, more contrasty. And I had the same complaint about the CB500X, but this is such a small nitpick and it's not gonna matter to most people. A few other things I've noticed as we start to ride the bikes today out here on the beautiful California coastline is uh, the suspension is really soft, but uh, that's intentional. You know, it gives a smooth ride, but you can, you can really work through the whole travel of the suspension really easily. So there is brake dive, but it's, it's not gonna bother the normal person that rides it. But what it does, it gives you a smooth ride so you can blast through potholes and rough, rough pavement. And this is really not an off-road motorcycle and Honda's very clear about that. They didn't design it to be an off-road bike. This is a road bike, um, but with the bigger front wheel and the, and the longer suspension, it just gives you that smooth ride to ride over really rough roads. And that's an awesome thing to have. And if you want to play around off-road, you certainly can. Um, but the overall sense of riding this thing, it has enough power to be fun and it doesn't feel like underpowered, uh, but it's, it's not intimidating either. And everything is just super easy, super easy to use. It's kind of what you expect from sort of a, a smaller Honda motorcycle. Roll on power, like right now I'm in fourth gear. I mean, it has 50, 60, 65, 70, like it has plenty of power to accelerate and pass traffic on the highway. So if you're riding something like a 250 or a 300, uh, or if you're maybe riding like a Royal Enfield 350 or even a Himalayan or anything like that, this bike has quite a lot more power than that uh, to keep you satisfied and to, to give you that high speed ability. So I just want to show you the uh, seat height and riding position of the SCL 500. So it's a really good beginner bike because you've only got a 31 inch seat height. I'll put the millimeters here below, but it's really, really approachable for newer riders or beginner riders, or if you're just not that tall. So I'll show you here, I'm five foot 10 or about 1.78 meters, and it's super easy for me to reach the ground. Uh, the riding position also, it's just very upright, neutral, and comfortable. And if you don't like the riding position of like the Rebel 500, which I personally don't, this might be more up your alley with this more traditional ergonomics. Your feet are underneath you for good control. The handlebars come up and it's a very comfortable, very nice riding position to be in. So going 70 miles an hour on the highway here, I mean, yeah, it's kind of windy because there's no windshield, obviously. You could put a windshield on if you wanted. Um, but, but really, the highway ability, so 75, 80, 85, uh, it's no problem for this bike. There's a tiny bit of buzz to the handlebars, but not that much. And, uh, you know, the motor doesn't feel too stressed. It's revving a little bit higher at these speeds, but it's not bad at all. It's certainly better than a lot of the single cylinder motorcycles. So having that twin cylinder is really nice. But I'd be totally happy to tour to go on long rides on this bike on the highway. Um, and having no windshield, you get a lot of wind, but it's pretty quiet because there's no wind buffeting, you know, from a, from a windshield like a lot of bikes have. All right, getting on some nice little fun twisty back roads here. You know, you never, we never ride slow on these press, on these press events. Um, <laughs> it's a little bit wet, so we have to be a little careful. Don't want to have any accidents. Um, you know, the bike is, is super easy handling because you've got the skinny tires. You've got this wide handlebar. The bike is lightweight. So, I mean, you can really throw this bike around. It's surprisingly agile and sporty uh, on a nice back road like this. Man, this is so much fun. And you can just dial in all the power. <laughs> Full power. You. Then the brakes, the brakes are a little soft, but who cares? It's not, it's not a MotoGP bike. It's not a track bike. The brakes are good enough for what you need to do. It is just a single disc up front. Trail brake power. And the power is enough to be entertaining. But I think one of the most impressive things for me is the, it's just the handling. It's so, it's so light and easy to handle. Man, so much fun. 
I mean, I get to ride a lot of fast, expensive motorcycles, and honestly, I, I really have more fun on this, just because it's back to basics, you know? Okay, this bike has standard ABS. Let me show you why that's so good. Let's say I need to panic brake right now. That's full braking, ABS engagement. And it gives you the confidence, if you're an experienced rider, to use all the brakes, even on a wet, bumpy road like this. And if you're a newer rider and you kind of panic, or actually anybody could panic and need to stop, because an animal runs out, a dog runs out, a car cuts you off, boom, you can stop as fast as possible with the ABS system. And it prevents the bike from, you know, crashing, from sliding. So again, there's full brakes. You can stop really quickly. And uh, I'm so happy that Honda's decided to go just standard ABS. Here in the USA, motorcycles aren't required to have ABS. I know in other countries they are, uh, but it's nice that Honda's doing that. I would never really buy a motorcycle that did not have ABS. Not a bike that I was going to ride on the street anyway. Because even for a pretty experienced rider like me, uh, who's been to a lot of classes and stuff, the ABS is such a life-saving system. And you don't really need it until you need it, but you can't always plan for that. Not everything's perfect with a motorcycle, right? We always have to point out some of the things I don't like. Um, we talked about the dash. I wish it was a little bit brighter. Um, so being a scrambler style bike, and this applies to all these kind of modern scramblers, and I've talked about this in other videos, but having the exhaust high up like that, it really kind of limits your luggage options. Um, having the high exhaust, you know, it's like, okay, I get it for the style, and you kind of have to do that if you want a scrambler but it makes mounting saddlebags a lot harder. So I noticed uh, like one, the Honda accessory is just a saddlebag on one side because on the other side, they've got the exhaust. Now I'm sure you can get saddlebags on both sides and there'll be plenty of options to do that. Um, but it just, it just makes it, you know, a little, a little bit less friendly for luggage. Um, but I will say, unlike the Triumph Scramblers that I've tested, this, the exhaust on this bike, it runs below the engine uh, on this part right here. So your leg is never hitting the exhaust, which is a great thing. And I hated that about some of the other Scramblers I've tested, where your leg is in, into the exhaust the whole time. That's just dumb. Um, this bike doesn't have that problem. So the exhaust goes under and then comes up at the back, which is, which is the right way to do it. Uh, and engine heat, I, I can't detect any engine heat, but we're not riding in hot weather. But you know, the nice thing about kind of a smaller engine like this um, is that they just, they don't put out a lot of heat. So that's kind of a nice thing. Okay, so we're like halfway through the ride today. I'm still having a great time on the SCL 500. Um, the seat is a little soft, so you start to feel a little bit of seat discomfort after a couple hours, but it's not bad. It's just most motorcycle seats are a little bit on the soft side. Um, this is the soft suspension. Yeah, it does kind of move around a lot under you. I think it's designed this way uh, to give you kind of a smooth ride through potholes and stuff like that. And I think it suits the bike well and the, and the kind of person who's going to buy this bike. I think it's a, a good idea to kind of have that soft suspension. Um, what else? Uh, if I could change one thing about it, I know this sounds kind of like a nitpick, but it's honestly this dashboard. Uh, when I put my uh, sun visor down on my helmet, I have one of those flip down sun visors inside my helmet. And I really could use the dashboard to have more contrast. It kind of washes out. Like riding right now, it's very hard to read the, uh, the dash. So, you know, if you want to look down and see what speed you're going and stuff like that, it just kind of washed out. If you wear sunglasses, Ch uh, Case here with TFL, he's uh, wearing uh, polarized sunglasses and he says it really washes out his dashboard. So I'm not a fan of this LCD design. That would be one thing I would change if I could probably change one thing about it. But it's just such an easy motorcycle to get along with and the gear shift is so smooth, the clutch is so smooth. There is a little bit of a throttle uh, jerkiness, just a little bit. It's not bad and it's not something that really I think most people are going to notice but if you're really sensitive to that you might notice a little bit of throttle jerkiness uh, the one thing that impresses me most is the handling of the bike it's just so flickable and so playful in terms of handling and I'm really was kind of really impressed with that so the only time you really start to feel sort of the budget nature of the of this bike is if you try to ride really fast like on bumpy roads 
because the suspension is, is really softly sprung and it doesn't have good damping so it kind of just bounces and just the chassis has a lot of movement it's not very well controlled but I, I don't think that's why people are buying this bike to tear up the local canyons and you can still have a ton of fun uh, the way this is set up and I, I know why they do the soft suspension it's to make it have a soft ride when you hit bumps and things like that so they like to say that you meet the nicest people on a Honda, right? That was the old ad slogan. And I think a bike like this really makes that true because you're in such a good mood when you ride a bike like this. There's just, it's so easy and so much fun. It's so approachable. It's not threatening. It's comfortable. Everything works like it should. And it just makes you in a good mood. It's not so fast and serious that you have to be hanging on for dear life. It's not too tall. You know, but it has a motorcycle personality. It's like one step up from that sort of scooter or something like that. It's just, just a fantastic all-around motorcycle. This bike is really refreshing to ride because it just is a back-to-basics approach. And I think that's what a lot of riders are looking for. Whether you're a newer rider just getting started in motorcycling, or maybe you're even a lot more experienced and you just want something that's back to basics and just no nonsense that just goes from point A to point B, looks cool, it's comfortable to ride, easy to ride, not expensive, it's not going to have any drama, it's not going to break down. I mean, what more can you really ask for, for this at this price point? This is a motorcycle for all people, for all roads, for all reasons. And because of that, I absolutely love this thing. This is not a spec sheet motorcycle where you're going to, you know, do a big spreadsheet and talk about how all the specs compare to something else for performance. Those things really don't matter too much. We've already covered all the things that, you know, a prospective buyer for this motorcycle probably wants to know. Um, if you're asking that if I recommend it, yes, I have zero hesitation in recommending this bike. And I think here's the biggest endorsement that I could give it. You know, I have access to all the latest and greatest high-tech, high-powered motorcycles from all different segments. And I had more fun riding this bike today than I do riding most of those other bikes. And I think that kind of says everything that you need to know. So if you have comments, if you have questions, please pop them down below and I'll do my best to get back to you on those questions. Uh, I sincerely hope this video was informative and useful. If it was, please consider supporting the channel and there's ways to do that in the description and the pinned comment below. Thank you so much for watching, ride safe, and I'll see you out there. <laughs>